Game Freak is one of the most beloved game developers around. The people behind this fat rat and this set of keys have consistently released high caliber role playing experiences for decades. In recent years though, this fictional backstory has become less believable than ever. The last few Pokemon games have brought to light one of Game Freak's most glaring issues. They cannot do 3D. They've shown us time and time again that they're truly awful at dealing with this extra dimension. And after 8 years, this toxic relationship has gone from excusable to embarrassing. The real head scratcher is why. They didn't have to take this specific route. Do they like how it looks? Do they think they have something to prove to us? Is someone holding them hostage? These are all very good questions that may or may not be answered here. In both the overworld and in battles, Pokemon looks pretty damn bad. Of course there are parts that look great and others that look passable, but overall the games do not look that impressive. They have always topped the previous installment in terms of realism. On the DS, the characters were getting taller and more detailed. The 3DS games continued this trend, with each new installment having a less grid-like world and more detailed characters. It seems like they've reached a point where they don't know what they want. They make the characters tall and scale the buildings as if they want it to look more realistic, but they half-ass it so it looks unfinished. As the games become more realistic, the worlds appear more uncanny since they don't fully commit to the look. The amount of effort put into these games really shows, and they just end up feeling rushed and lazy. Although the overworld may be slowly improving, the battles on the other hand have hardly changed. They have these high quality models standing around in stiff, lifeless poses being forced to play out these poorly made animations. I'm sure many of us have grown tired of this conversation, but it doesn't make it any less true. What makes this so much worse is looking at the difference between the 2D sprites and 3D models of various Pokemon. Not only do the colors look washed out, but the poses and animations have rid these Pokemon of any personality. I understand that the reasoning behind the desaturation is to make them look more realistic, but why didn't they add any texture? The models are still baby butt cheek smooth. You can't just slide the saturation down and call it a day. But the visual pain doesn't stop there, unfortunately. The locations that these battles occur in are also depressing. Taking place in these ambiguous scenes, Pokemon battles are also stuck in a bit of an uncanny valley. Not every location has a unique battle scene, even though there's only about 5 unique settings in the whole game, and some of these locations are just straight up gradients. I will admit that the newer games did make some progress here, so I have to give them some credit. The new installments have finally added trainers into the scene. Although they just stand there in incredibly deep thought, they do direct their Pokemon. I mean, at least we get to see them? Never mind. Battles are a key part of these games, so it's ridiculous that they don't bother making them more interesting to look at. This brings me to my big question, why? Don't bother answering that because I can't hear you. And don't comment it either because I can't read my comments without my mom's permission. Game Freak didn't have to take this path. They could have kept the games 2D and still improved the visuals. By the end of its time on the DS, Pokemon looked amazing. The scenery and sprites had such personality and they were only getting better. Maybe I'm only saying this now, but I don't think as many people would have been upset over the graphics if they had improved the 2D ones to a modern standard. Doing this would have been much easier for them, and it could have given them more time to improve other aspects of the games. Though this may be somewhat controversial, I don't mind the graphics of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl 2, and I like the direction they went with the Let's Go series. Please go easy on the report button. These games have a clear vision of what they want to be. Ugly. They have a defined and identifiable style, and realistic graphics don't always mean good graphics. Game Freak has shown us that they cannot do realistic 3D, so why should they? I think a very solid alternative would be to make the games more stylized. Sure, it would be nice if they could make it look realistic or impressive, but they can't. The Let's Go series went all in on a less realistic style, and I think it really paid off. It's obviously a more cartoony world, so it's a little less unsettling seeing these grown men stare off into the distance. A stylized world would allow them to use those brighter colors and interesting poses without it looking too out of place. Also, with these less intensive graphics, they were able to add features to Let's Go that had been desired for years, such as following Pokemon and wild Pokemon in the overworld. Another option I'd like to explore is outsourcing, which has always been a thing for the spin-off games. Recently though, we've seen Game Freak give someone else the wheel for developing a mainline game. While I don't think that Game Freak should give up completely, they should at least have another company handle the graphics and other details in their game. 
Sword and Shield weren't that bad in terms of Pokemon games. I think the real issue was the polish, which they could have another team take care of. It's clear that the team is stretched thin with these endless Pokemon projects, so saving time on the slow parts of development could really improve the games in many ways. I don't know, maybe the team would feel more creative and create a story that doesn't revolve around the same four events? It's obvious that Game Freak doesn't have to limit themselves when making these games, but who knows if we'll ever find out why they choose to. Although they've developed about 7 mainline games in 3D, Game Freak still doesn't have a firm grasp of the dimension. With unfinished worlds and static battle scenes, these games feel more like fan games than AAA titles. We've seen other companies create 3D environments better than Game Freak, so it's kind of odd that they haven't delegated that task to another studio completely. For a company that doesn't take much fan input, it's even more odd that they went 3D in the first place. With so much potential, it's frustrating to see the amount of effort put into these games. Maybe one day Pokemon will get the fully developed game that it deserves. Thanks for watching.